Alright, so today I am going to be showing you guys how to bypass the governor on a Predator 212 engine. So we have a brand new engine, brand new in the box, so let's open it up. Alright, so some of you may have concerns about what may happen if you bypass the governor on one of these engines. You may have heard stories about it may damage the engine, or it may blow the engine up, or something crazy like that. Now, I'm not going to say that that's not going to happen, but what I am going to say is, speaking from personal experience, I've never had a Predator engine blow up on me or have it damaged due to bypassing the governor. This is my seventh Predator engine that I have purchased. All six of the Predator engines that I have on either a go-kart or, or a mini bike, I have the governor bypass. And I can honestly say I've never had anything damaging happen to the engine due to bypassing the governor. So I'm going to say use discretion, don't do anything stupid, don't run the engine full tilt for over a couple minutes. That may damage the engine. Just use discretion when doing all this stuff. All right, so here you see the whole assembly that they already have on here. Now, if you want to keep the governor on here and hook up a throttle cable, all you have to do is loosen up this nut right here a little bit to where when you push this arm this way, it will spring back. Then all you have to do is take a bicycle cable, any kind of cable, and uh, cable and housing, put the housing in here and then run the cable through there and then that will allow you to throttle up the engine using the governor. Now to bypass the governor all you have to do is take off this nut right here, throw it away, you don't need it or keep it in case you ever want to put this back on. Take off these two pieces, throw those away if you don't want to keep them. Now, you don't want to damage this spring right here, so therefore, take it off and put it to the side. Now, this spring right here, you don't really care about, so you can just yank it off, or you can gingerly remove it. Come on! There we go. Take this arm, throw it away. You don't need it. Remove this. If you want to, you can remove this right here, just you don't really have to, it's just, you know, remove stuff that uh, you don't really need. Get that out of here. Alright, so what you're left with once you remove all that stuff is you want to keep this plate on here. You also want to keep this part on here. This is very important. And you also want to keep the spring that you removed from right there. So you want to keep this assembly the way they already, the way they previously had it. Leave that alone, and you're not going to be messing with that that much. You want to take the spring, clip it, the short side, to right here, and then somehow attach this longer side to right here. Whether that's uh, you put the gas tank back on, the bolt that's extruding right there, you can take this, wrap it around that bolt, and put the nut on there, and that will hold the spring on there. Or, if you're not putting the gas tank back on here, what you can do is just take a normal bolt, Put, wrap that around there, put that through that hole, take a nut, tighten it all down, just like this. So basically, however you attach it, all you're trying to do is have the governor arm spring this way, so therefore when you attach the throttle cable from here to here, when you pull the throttle, it will spring this way, and then when you let the throttle go, it will automatically spring that way. That's what you're trying to do, so therefore if you let go of the throttle it will automatically t return to idle. Whichever, if now if it doesn't do that you either need to buy a newer cable to where it's easier to move or you need to make this spring stronger or move it up more. Whatever way works, that's what you're just trying to do is have this return to idle. Next you want to find some bicycle bicycle cable or some throttle cable, whatever you're using, it all works the same, but there's basically two different ways to be able to hook this up. If you're using if you're using the end which has the ball on the end, that's the easiest way, but if you don't have that, you're not fortunate enough to have that, it is possible 
to do it without the ball on the end. So if you are using the end with the ball, what you want to do is completely remove the cable all the way from the cable housing, take the end without the ball, then you want to take this end and feed it up through one of these holes. You could drill this hole a little, a little bit bigger. I forgot to do that before I did this, so it would make it a lot easier to do it, but you don't really have to do it. So basically you just want to make sure you're feeding it all the way through and none of the threads are being left behind, otherwise that will completely ruin the throttle cable. So then, once you get that, just feed it all the way through, just like that. Next, you take that end and you feed it back into the cable housing. So once you get the uh, housing fed back onto the cable, take a Phillips screwdriver, loosen up this bolt right here. Not too much, just enough to where you can snake the cable underneath it and then the cable housing underneath it. Now, for demonstration purposes, this cable I'm using is pretty short and uh, you can put this, doesn't really matter where you put this, but I need to have some stick out, so therefore I'm gonna put it right about there. Then, once you get the cable where you need it, you can tighten this back up pretty tight. And there you go, it works. You can see it works easily. It's a little bit loose right now, so I'm not sure if it would uh, return. See how it returns when I let it go? If you ever fall off, you want it ret to return to idle. That's very important. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to do it with this end right here, the end without the ball at the end. So basically, it's the same way. All you really have to do is take needle nose pliers, right now I'm using whelpers, and bend a kink in the cable just like that. Then you take this end, you shove it down in that hole, and then work it all the way down. Sometimes you need to grab the pliers to yank it. So basically, just like that. Then you take zip ties and then you wrap it around. I'd recommend using two of them just for precautions. Two of them is going to hold it on a little bit better. And then you tighten them as much as possible and then you snip the ends with whatever tool you have. So yeah, as you can see, this is a lot simpler to do all you have to do is remove this stupid arm and put a spring on this side of the governor arm and have the throttle cable pull this side of the governor arm. And that's the, as simple as it gets and it does the exact same function as removing the governor without having to take out anything internally. And if you're wondering if because we're using the governor arm, will the governor still interfere with the operation of this engine. I'm gonna say no, just because, you know, we did put a spring on here and the governor isn't strong enough right now to manipulate this the way it is right now. So this is a lot simpler to do and it works the exact same. So if you have any questions on anything I did differently or anything that is not working for you guys, go ahead and uh, post the, those questions in the comments and I'll try to answer all the questions I can but it's basically just you know simple enough that's how you do it it works exactly the same so yeah I'm gonna end the video here thank you for watching subscribe and have a nice day